Hi everybody, this is Dagan. Today we're going to play around with Apple IIgs emulation and I'm going to show you how to set up a fresh GSOS uh, installation image uh, for your emul emulator. And uh, we're going to use kegs. I'll show you how to build kegs, but really kegs is old and if you're just starting out you probably want to start with something like a GS port, which is more modern, has a nice installer and is a, a lot better supported. But uh, for those that are just interested in kind of maybe playing around with the uh, emulation code itself, it's probably good to know how to build kegs. So uh, the other thing I find really interesting is I can go back to this page and download the uh, you know, keg 0 0.91 over 12 years old and still compile it and get it to run. <clears throat> so first I'm going to make a little Apple II directory, uh, 2GS directory, and I just downloaded that tar file from the keg source forge page and untar and ungzip it. So now you can see we have the directory there. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and remove that gzip right now because I don't need it anymore. Okay, so looking in the source directory, if you're building kegs or early even GS port, to compile this for our system, we first have to tell it which vars file to use. This defines the system we're compiling for, and right now you can see a symbolic link to vars mac. And they're actually talking about older pre-OS 10 Macs, so this isn't relevant to modern Macintosh compilation. Um, we're going to actually just remove that symbolic link and use the Linux configuration because BSD Mac OS 10 is close enough for our purposes for this little educational venture. So now you can see I've created the symbolic link to the VARS x86 Linux, and we can try and compile it, which is generally done on Unix systems by running the make command, which reads the make file. And you can see we get an error, unknown target, Pentium. And that's because of this architecture command specifying Pentium. And we could go ahead and fix that, but I'm not really interested in fixing all of the old kegs code right now, so I'm just going to take that off and try make again takes a second here on the engine code, but it should complete with a couple of warnings, which again, I don't care about for our purposes today. Now that it's finished compiling, if you see the last command, it moves the binary up one directory. So I'm going to go to the parent and move the required configuration file and the uh, xkegs binary. Now we have our Apple II GS directory with our emulator, so let's try it. It has to launch the X Windows system, which doesn't come standard on newer releases of OS X, but you can still download it. It's another reason you should probably consider using GS port. Unfortunately, nothing happens. We just get this row of asterisks. So opening the kegs configuration menu, you can see that we haven't defined what ROM file we're using. And that's basically the uh, the firmware that's on the firmware chip, which isn't distributed with emulators. So I'm going to uh, an FTP site that's fairly commonly known, and I have all these links on the YouTube video. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, the ROM 1GS. You can see ROM 3GS is a little bit bigger, and that's because it has uh, more of the t later tool sets with it, which is actually a great benefit, but um, I'm just going to use ROM 1 for right now, no particular reason. If you're ever trying to release code, you definitely want to test for both because uh, there are some big differences there as far as things like mouse handling. So I've unzipped this ROM now that I've downloaded it. And I'm actually going to rename it because I actually like to install ROM 1 and ROM 3 and be able to switch back and forth. So we'll try and launch again and go into the kegs configuration menu, which looks like the Apple IIgs control panel a bit. And it's done using the F4 key on, on uh, Macintosh, and I have to actually use the little function F4 to get in there. So I select my ROM, and now it knows that we're a ROM 1GS, and I reboot, and lo and behold, we booted fine just to the monitor, and you can do all the things that you would expect to be able to do, list memory locations and whatnot. But now we need something to boot to. So on what is the Apple II GS? Uh, website. They have system software. I'm going to download the system 6.01 release and 
go ahead and move that into our little emulator directory here and unzip this. Luckily, these are already in disk image format. You don't have to worry about converting uh, shrinked archives over to floppies and somehow extracting those. Again, I'm just getting rid of the zip. Now I need to tell kegs via the F4 menu again that I want it to put that first disk of the system software in slot 5, disk 1, and we want to boot from there. Uh, it's currently set up to scan, which means it's going to start at slot 7 and move its way down. And for some reason that's having a problem in my emulator, and it's a bit of a pain to go into the control panel, uh, the real GS control panel, which is done using command control escape, or on a real Apple, open Apple uh, control escape, to set these slots. And right now I have it set up with the slot 7. I would rather just leave that on, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of work around it by manually booting, so I hope that doesn't confuse anybody that I'm directly uh, calling these ports, but this is one way to boot. Slot 5 is C500G. Just be careful that you actually have a disk drive in slot 5 and not some other device that you should not be calling directly like that. So this is the System 6 installer. You can see it uh, shows you which disk it's planning to try and install to. It won't actually let us install to the install drive itself, so we need a disk. We don't have one. So let's go to get Apple Commander, which does have a couple of issues, uh, the UI version, but for those just starting out, it's a good choice. Otherwise, if you're on Windows, Cider Press is really great, uh, and the Apple Commander command line tools are great. There's other options. I'm just kind of showing you one. So we run Apple Commander, and we can create a blank hard drive image. We'll choose ProDOS, which is the required uh, partition type, 32 megs, the maximum size you can use. Uh, we'll call it GSOS. Unfortunately, I think there's a naming bug on here that cuts off the last letter, so I'll just go ahead for now and then fix that later. Click Finish. You can see we have an empty image here, no files in it so far. And that's okay because we're going to install a fresh uh, installation of the operating system on there. I'll go ahead and save this in our directory. And you can see it cut off the S of GSOS, and I'm not sure why. I'm just going to go ahead and rename that right now because it annoys me. I don't even really care about the extension. Kegs will recognize it. And uh, oops, of course I chose the name I wanted it to be. Okay, so we've renamed that. Let's go ahead and uh, just take a look at this. So you can do this through the F4 menu, or you can just edit the text file directly, the config file. Now I've got my new disk image there. Oops, it tried to boot disk slot 7, which is just our empty image. That won't work. So <laughs> well, let's go ahead and do the same work around to boot directly to slot 5 because I'm a little bit lazy, I guess. Oops, don't want the memory location. We want to actually execute. Okay, so now we're back where we were with the installer part. And that would be great, except since my image is empty and uh, there's really nothing on it, I need to format it first. So we'll actually use one of the tools that comes with the set of installation disks called Advanced Disk Utility. So I quit out of the installation and I'm going to insert System Tools Disk 1 and Slot 5 Disk 2. And it sees that I inserted it and we can just run Advanced Disk Utility from there. I want to change disk until I find our GSOS disk. Um, unfortunately, it's going to kind of do the grind, grind, grind thing when it scans the virtual uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drives, which don't exist on here, but it does slow down emulation for reasons I won't get into here. So we can uh, zero it. I didn't mean to do that. We want to initialize it and I fix the name. So we've successfully formatted our disk. Now let's try and boot it. Went to slot 7 again, unable to load ProDOS. That's great, that means the format was successful, it's got the correct boot block and everything. So booting a different way 
really the same way, but from basic instead of the monitor, PR space number five to, again, tell slot five, boot up. Now we can finally install. You can see I fixed the name. Uh, you can go into customize to choose which things, but let's just go ahead and do the easy update, which does the entire installation of system six and updates uh, to get it to system 6.01, or at least that's what it indicates. I have to do a little bit of disk swapping here. I just keep changing the second disk so that I don't have to swap the install disk in and out since that has some of the required tool sets and things from the booted operating system. A couple more swaps. Of course, I'm running this emulator at the highest speed that I can. It does slow down when it tries to access certain disk drives, but otherwise, this is a really speedy install process, for, especially for any of us who remember doing it with all of the real-life disk swaps when we were kids. And we're done. I'm actually going to quit out of here. Remember, I booted from the floppy. And we can take a look at that GSOS hard drive image and see that sure enough it's got basic system and the system folder there's the finder we can launch it from there great so everything seems to be installed the next thing is to make sure that we can boot directly to this drive and that we don't have to boot from our install disk or some other operating system disk but that it's bootable on its own so let's verify that sure enough booted right up I'm going to go ahead and eject these. You can just hit E. It basically puts a pound symbol in front of them to comment them out. If you look at the config file, you can verify that. Or you could just go in the config file and delete those entirely. But anyway, we now have our finder image. We need some software. I'm going to go ahead and just do a little virtual shutdown on this. Yay. We can close that. So maybe some games or something. Um, yeah, sure. I think probably the best game that ever came out for the Apple IIGS is called Merlin 16 Plus. It's actually an assembly compiler, and uh, there's no greater feeling than beating the compiler. Best game ever. So I've downloaded that image from the same place we got the system software images, and I'm just moving it into our same directory, being a little bit sloppy, if I could do it correctly. I'll unzip those. You can see it actually has um, a couple of disk images in here. Uh, there's some samples, there's some extra source, there's a lot of ways to learn about Merlin, I won't cover that here. But I, all joking about it being a game aside, I think Merlin is a, a great thing for people to start playing with writing software for the Apple IIGS. Where there's two that were are similar here. There's auto, which is a self-booting image, and prog, which is not. We'll just use that. We don't need the auto because we're going to copy it to our own booting drive. So we'll open up Merlin and take a look. Great. You see kind of select all command there. Oh, let's create a new folder. Apparently I already had one. Just trash this other one. and give ourselves a little Merlin folder. And we're going to just select all and drag it over. It will copy by default since this is on a di different drive. We can go ahead and inject this floppy drive now. We don't need that anymore. We'll go ahead and drag, drag the icon out to our desktop for convenience sake, and let's try it out just to make sure it runs. And wonderful, now you can start programming your Apple IIGS. I'm not suggesting that any of these are best practices. I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the things you might need to do or that you might encounter setting up your own emulator environment. And again, if you're new to this, I would suggest looking at something like GS port versus kegs. But uh, there you go. This is our Apple IIGS running 6.0.1.